Welcome to Medic in Life. My name is Jennifer. Thank you so much for clicking on this video of my absolute favorite natural deodorant. And I have recently surpassed 300 subscribers. I know that <laughs> that is a pretty small number um, when you are thinking about YouTube subscribers. When you see lots of popular channels that you watch, they have hundreds of thousands, if not maybe even a million. But 300 for me is huge because I feel like I have built that um, from zero and it really means a lot to me. So thank you so much to everybody who watches my videos. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing. I would love to have you be part of this community. So my natural deodorant journey started a long time ago. I'm 36. I know I was dating my husband, so I must have been about 24. So let's say like 12 years ago. And um, there's a lot of reasons why I got interested in cleaning up a few of my personal health care products. And I'm not here to tell you that you should use natural deodorant or that conventional deodorant is bad for you. There is tons of research out there and I have seen both sides of it. Um, and I tend to fall on the side that just would prefer to use and I hate the word natural because I don't necessarily think a synthetic ingredient is bad for us just because it's synthetic. Um, where I'm going with it is I'm trying to either limit ingredients um, and in deodorant especially stay away from aluminum and I definitely wanted to stay away from anything that was an antiperspirant. Um, I was at that point in time really doing some like important things to try to balance my hormones and it's been a good journey like I have made some good accomplishments with that and I really struggled especially that long ago to find natural deodorant so I actually toyed with making my own um, and then fast forward to years and years later um, having tried almost everything I could try and different levels of cleaner and or not as clean ingredients um, and then really enjoying like Schmitz for a couple years and just being like, nope, this is it, this is good. And then I had one day, I had purchased a different um, scent of the Schmitz deodorant and it was the perfect storm. So it wasn't just the Schmitz deodorant on its own, it was, um, I think I had freshly shaved my underarms that morning and it was like a million degrees out and I went to work in a tank top that was sort of um, rough right at that edge of where my armpit would have been shaved and where I had my deodorant and I got the worst case of irritation. Um, I mean, I could hardly make it through the day. It was so bad. So I actually messaged Schmitz and they sent me like a really awesome um, bit of information and I, after that, continued to use it for some time with good luck. But. I was in bed, um, pregnant with my daughter Odessa, so let's say like two and a half-ish years ago. She just turned two. And I was like, I wanna do um, like a clean deodorant roundup. And so I just started ordering all sorts of different deodorant. I had recently had some Primal Pit Paste that was gifted to me from a local health food store. Um, what else had I tried? Well, I was using for sure the Schmitz. Oh, and so then I ordered Native, I ordered Type A, and I stumbled across, because you know how Facebook stocks you, and then once it knows what you're looking for, it sent me the Little Seed Farm. So here's a jar of the Little Seed Farm, and this has been the end of my deodorant journey. <laughs> this is where it has stopped for me, and I do not think that it gets any better from here. So let me tell you a little bit more about this deodorant and why I love it so much. So before I get too far, let me just say that um, I do retail this product at my salon. So this is available locally where I have my shop. So what happened that night when I was scrolling through Facebook and it popped up was I saw there, well, I think it's changed now, but it was like pick two free natural deodorant cream samples for zero dollars and then you just paid for the shipping and handling. So I think for $2.50 or $2.99, I was able to order a couple samples. So I was like, that's perfect. I don't have to spend a ton of money and I can give it a try. And when I got it, it came in these little foil packs and when I squeezed them out on my hand, it seemed almost like, I don't know, I was like, it's like a cream, it was so weird. Um, and so I popped it on one morning and went on my merry way to work and 
all day long. I was like, this deodorant is amazing. I was actually staying dry. There was no order and I felt very comfortable throughout the day. So I dove in deeper and wanted to look at the ingredients and what they say, you know, a little bit more about their product. And also what I find to be really cool about the packaging system that it comes in because most people would see it and be like Ugh, a jar I don't want to deal with that um, but actually that is part of what makes it really cool so when I first started purchasing this the deodorant actually retailed for $13.99 or like $14 and it has actually come down in price because they have become more popular and are able to afford to make the product at a less expensive cost so they have extended that to their customer base which I think is amazing and you get 2.4 ounces, which is 68 grams. This deodorant lasts a long time. So here you can see that I have made a huge dent in this jar, but I find this to last a long time. Now, a lot of times I have a couple different scents at the same time, so I don't even realize exactly how long it takes me to use it, but I would say that one deodorant would last you at least about three months. So the two ingredients that I believe to be the star of the show and what they have talked about as well when I've watched some of the videos and read some of the things that they'll post like on their Instagram is the arrowroot powder instead of a baking soda tends to be so finely milled and very silky in powder form and does a really good job at keeping like the surface of your armpit dry. <laughs> and then also the magnesium hydroxide. And they have said that people find that from using this product with the magnesium hydroxide in it for an extended period of time, it actually overall helps your underarms to maintain like a more balanced environment where you probably, if you forget your deodorant, you wouldn't get stinky throughout the day anyway. So you're probably wondering, what's magnesium hydroxide? Well, I actually, I did know what it is, but I pulled it up so I could just read it to you but it's technically a laxative and antacid and it can treat constipation, upset stomach and heartburn. And I'm sure you're going, what? But here's the thing that really rang true to me. Um, a friend of mine had once told me that I think a doctor had recommended to her because she tended to have, um, like more trouble finding deodorants that worked for her to use milk of magnesia on her armpits. And she really found it to work. And I never really went that far to try it. But when I realized that that was technically that same ingredient, I was like, that's crazy because I've actually heard that that ingredient can work for that same purpose. Um, however, those products are made for something completely different. So I totally get if somebody doesn't want to use that on their armpit. So when I think of magnesium, I think of Epsom salt, I think of the natural calm that you can take. So there's actually 10 different types of magnesium and we won't get into all of it, but you may have heard of chloride, yep, citrate, threonate, sulfate, magnesium sulfate, which is the Epsom salt. Okay, so the magnesium hydroxide or magnesium oxide is a naturally a white powdery substance that may be sold in powder or capsules form. It is also the main active ingredient in milk of magnesia. It isn't used to prevent or treat magnesium deficiencies as some studies report, but is poorly absorbed by your digestive, digestive tract. Instead, it is used for heartburn, indigestion, and constipation. So I had to specifically look into what it does when it's on the surface of your body, like on your underarm. And if I pull up, this is Garrison's Minerals. This is a blog post, but I feel like this is a good explanation. So you can always look into it more. Um, but it says that studies have shown that magnesium hydroxide does not absorb into the skin. Instead, its main purpose in a natural deodorant is to counteract any odor causing bacteria on the surface of the skin without impacting the dermis and which is the layer of skin where sweat glands, pores, and hair follicles are contained. So that is the star ingredient for sure in here. And like I said, no baking soda, but arrowroot instead. So instead of getting a gritty baking soda feel, which baking soda does work, but it tends to be the main ingredient that causes irritation when people use it in natural deodorant. So you're getting a silky, fine arrowroot powder instead, and then you're getting the magnesium hydroxide powder as well, which helps to combat those bacteria that want to make us stinky. So some other ingredients in here will be um, coconut oil, jojoba oil, beeswax, so this is not a vegan formula, um, vegetable glycerin, and then for instance, this one has cucumber extract, 
Um, so no essential oils, which is great if you're um, sensitive to essential oils. And then this one also contains activated charcoal. The other scent I have to show you does not have activated charcoal in it. So it is more of a cream color. And this one is a little bit on the gray side, but don't worry if you use this and I will show you it does not create a get gray cast on your skin. And this one, this is the grapefruit and lemon. This one does have essential oils. So there are definitely ones that you may be more sensitive to if you have an essential oil sensitivity um, or to just certain ingredients. And they also have an unscented one. I don't have that one here to show you, but the coolest thing about the unscented one that I just saw, I think on their Instagram, is that you can actually take that and make your own scent with it. So if you had an extract you wanted to add or your own essential oil blend that you would like to put in there, you could sure take that product out, mix it up, and pop it back in your jar. So I consider the biggest difference between the activated charcoal and the original formula to be that I consider this to be like a little bit of a booster. Um, I actually have the exact same luck benefits when I use either option, but I have had some clients who have been using this for a while say that they do prefer the activated charcoal one, that they get just a little bit more odor control and um, like wetness protection with the activated charcoal. But don't let that hinder you from trying the original formula because I truly think that this works just as well. So these are, like I said, baking soda free, aluminum, um, aluminum free, and they do need to be kept in a cool place. So my bathroom is fine, but sometimes if it gets really heated up after a shower, the product may be a little bit more emollient, um, or if it's the dead of winter and it's sitting too close to the outside of my house and it gets really cold, it may feel a little bit harder, but it is no problem. It just warms up with the touch of your hand or once you put it onto your skin and rubs right in. And I will do a demo, so hold tight for that. So a couple more things I really wanna highlight is this product is cruelty free. Um, it is made without parabens, preservatives, or animal testing, so that is the cruelty free status. Um, you maybe wouldn't find this product because they are a small company still listed on a cruelty free website, um, but I have no doubt in my mind that this is a cruelty free company. Um, this product is made by hand at Little Seed Farm, like the family farm essentially in Tennessee. Um, and from what I understand, the reason this packaging is so cool to me, this is glass packaging which can be either repurposed or reused if, for instance, you live anywhere where they have um, where you can go in with your jar and purchase from their big batches and personally refill your jar. Now I'm nowhere near them, so we do not have that option here of now, um, but the great thing is, is that this can be recycled and repurposed, and these are great to repurpose. I just throw them in my dishwasher and they come perfectly clean. Along the lines of their sustainability, you can also um, choose to do zero waste shipping. Um, so when I get this product in the mail, they tend to use, they have to package it, of course, glass, um, has to be packaged safely, but they tend to use all sorts of things that can either be repurposed, reused, or easily recycled. Oh, and um, when they do use the peanuts in it, um, they come with the biodegradable packing peanuts that just dissolve in water and my daughters love those things. <laughs> so we actually get like a little science experiment when I get a wholesale order and I take those peanuts home to my little girls. So that is me gushing over this amazing company and this amazing product, but how do I apply? What do we do? I'm gonna zoom you out a little bit and we are actually gonna put this on. I'm gonna feel super self-conscious and that is just fine. <laughs> um, to use, gently rub a pea-sized amount um, into a clean, damp skin with your fingertips. They also have these amazing little bamboo applicators that I love to do. And these are available for $4 and I have these at my salon as well. So I am going to show you how I do it with um, the bamboo applicator on one side and then I'm going to show you on the other side how I do it with um, just fingertips. And um, as like strange as that seems, I just think it's nice to truly show you what it looks like and how well it actually does absorb into the skin. So I'm trying not to be awkward. <laughs> um, what I like to do, they say a pea-sized amount, but I just take my bamboo applicator and I get 
just about that much product on there. I feel like that if that was all balled up, that would be about a pea-sized amount. And I'm just going to turn a little bit. And I just go ahead and spread. And then I just, like I would with my fingers, just rub the product right in. And there's absolutely no reason you would need to use an applicator over your fingers. I am a hairdresser, and um, my poor hands, you guys, they just truly struggle to be washed so much so anytime I don't have to use my hands and then wash my hands um, and any extra I prefer to do that they just really are not doing well with um, soap <laughs> no during this time it's hard too and they're actually in really good shape right now but I do have to wear gloves almost every single thing I do at the salon so that's hard on a whole nother level so then for this one I would just take like that pea-sized amount <laughs> And I just pop it on and just rub it in. Just like you were going to rub in any kind of moisturizer. I think it rubs in faster when you use your hand. Um, but then, like I said, I like to get up and wash my hands then. And if I can avoid that at all costs. I'm not sure if you can see, but the product is completely absorbed. There is no shine. There is no stickiness. And it feels very dry. Same thing with over here. Like I mentioned, um, there is no like gray cast just because um, that's a great product. And one thing I will tell people, if you are truly, truly, truly worried about it transferring to your clothes, put the product on, make sure you rub it in really, really well, and then you can take, and then you can take a towel and you don't wanna wipe it off, but I would recommend just almost like pressing with material and just make sure, and I mean like, I know it's hard to see, but there's nothing on my towel, but then you're just kind of reinsuring that there's no product there, but it truly feels dry. And let me just show you on the back of my hand, if I were to take again that product, and let me get really close. So it looks a little shiny right away, and that's like all that coconut oil and jojoba oil, and then the more you rub, it just disappears. The cucumber is one of my favorite scents, and it's kind of funny because I don't think it's as popular as some of the other ones. And I really like that one. And it's just really light. It is definitely not overwhelmingly. If you were to think like, ew, cucumber, it's not overwhelming. None of their scents really are. I would say that the patchouli and rosemary one is the strongest but those are just strong scents in general like i said they have an unscented which you can wear unscented if, especially if you're sensitive to fragrance or you could make your own fragrance lavender the grapefruit lemon they have um yep i think i think that's the original the four original and then in the activated charcoal formula they have their original activated charcoal one which has a spearmint scent the cucumber and then the jasmine green tea which is, well, maybe that's my favorite. The, that one and the, the cucumber are tied for first place for sure. One more quick thing to add is that this, I know I've read somewhere where they have commented that this product can be used in other like personal hygiene areas where you might be struggling with scent and you would apply the same way. You would just rub the product in and then go about your merry business. <laughs> Um, I am curious if you're interested in trying this product. If you are local, please, please get a hold of me. I would love to get you a sample. I have samples on hand. And if you've used this deodorant, please let me know down in the comments what you think. And if you have a deodorant that you absolutely love, please let me know because I still do enjoy trying other ones. So thank you so much for joining me today. If you like this video, please give it a like. I'd love to hear it from you down in the comments and consider subscribing if you have not already. And I will see you in my next video. Bye everybody.